Are you Quran only Muslim? No, I'm Quran and Hadith. I follow both the Quran and the okay. Hadith. Okay. Well, I, I don't know why would you ask that question about Allah entering his creation. Do you believe he does? It, yeah. is, it doesn't say that in the in the in Islam. Well, he just, uh, he, just he just conceded it, Sam. He just conceded that in in the Quran that yeah. Allah did appear to the mountain and appeared on earth. Yeah, but not only that, he said he follows the Hadith. Every third part of the night, what does Allah do? He descends to the lowest heaven. Is a heaven part of creation or it's uncreated? But we don't understand how that works. We, yeah, we just, we, we know, that's, and then when Christians tell you we don't understand, and we say mystery, ah, I see you stupid Christians, but you can use it. But still, does he enter the third, the lowest heaven every third part of the night? He comes down. The hadith says he comes down to the lowest heaven. Okay, so when he's coming down, he's entering it's heaven creation. Heaven is creation, yes. Okay, so heaven's creation. So what is this about Allah not entering into creation? When you just said, because you follow hadith, Allah comes down to the lowest heaven, the heaven nearest to us, which is part of creation. Yeah, that is true, yes. Okay, so where's the He debate? doesn't come on earth. He doesn't come to the earth, though. You want to bet? Surah 27, 7 to 9 says he was on earth in a tree. Can you open it up for him? And you just admitted that he showed up on earth when he appeared to the mountain. You just, Make up your mind. You just said it was a good point. Make up your mind. It's confusing. Surah 27, 7 to 9. If you want to open it up, let him read it. Your Allah was here in a tree, speaking from a tree. Because the Quran is parroting what the Bible says without understanding. And you guys don't understand the Quran, so you go with later Islamic theology. In fact, are you a Salafi or you are Ashari, where you believe Allah is present everywhere? Is Allah I, I'm, a Salafi. I'm a Salafi. Okay, so you believe Allah is present only with his knowledge, right? Yes. Okay, but so uh, here's as he's bringing it up, I need you to answer honestly. What verse was it again, Sam? Chapter 27, 27 to 9. Because if you're this kind of Muslim that can have actual dialogues, you can come back to my channel. But here's the question I'm going to ask you. You don't believe that uh, we would say Allah is above the throne. You wouldn't say he's yes. on the throne, right? Yes, he's above the throne. He's above the throne. And the throne is above the seven heavens, right? Yes. And Allah can't be everywhere, right? Yes. Now explain to me how a being that's bodiless and shapeless, <clears throat> how can he be above anything? When to be above something assumes spatial distinction, that this being is spatially distinct from this entity, which is why he's not with it or a part of it, but above it. So does Allah have a body? Allah does not have a body. He just, he's above oh, so the throne. You, don't, believe don't, you, don't you believe he has two right hands? and at Yes, least he has two right hands. He has, he has eyes. He has hands. He has, he, has a waist. he has a face, yes. But does he have oh, a we, waist? We, we, <laughs> The Prophet never said Allah has a just a body, so yeah, we don't describe true, it. But he didn't say he doesn't. So if you're if you are a smart Salafi, you can't affirm or deny. You said he doesn't. No, he didn't say he does. He doesn't say he doesn't. So you have to say Allahu Adam. So why are you speaking when your Prophet didn't say yes or no? Because the, we don't, Muslims we don't have a picture of Allah when we go to a mosque. We don't have we a don't picture need to of have Allah. A picture. We already picture it in our mind. He's got two right hands, at least three eyeballs, one foot that he'll put over hell, and he's got a waist. I can imagine the shape, and I can draw it for you. You may not draw it, but you just told me. Okay, when someone tells me my Allah has a face, okay, he's got at least three eyeballs because the Quran uses the word eyes in the plural meaning three or more. Okay, two right hands. Hmm. He's got a waist, he wears an izar, and he has got a foot. I just imagine what Allah looks like because you just told me what he looks like and you created an image in my mind. Good job, buddy. But now, going back to the issue I asked you, your prophet did not say he doesn't have a body. He did not say he has a body. So you cannot say yes or no. You have to say Allahu Alam. So why would you Allah, tell It's me? true, buddy. But if he has a body, that means that would make him limited. You know, Allah is supposed to be. You've already made him limited because you just told me he's above the throne. So that means he's limited. Because uh -oh. if he is unlimited, then you cannot locate him in a uh -oh. certain location or space that separates him from other space and location. Yeah. Coming back to the issue, you said he's not in creation. Surah 27, 7 to 9. All right. Yeah, I like also what, special shout out I like from what Oscar said, limited edition God. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, peace, <laughs> your people, there's a ex-Muslim Salafi who's a hafiz of the Quran. He's a Christian. He's on TikTok. He invites people to call and have conversation with him, and he knows the Arabic inside and out. So I recommend you also talk to him. I had him on my channel last night giving his testimony. Now here, 
Surah 27, 7 to 9. When Moses said to his people, I observe a fire and will bring you news of it, or I'll bring you a flaming brand, that perhaps, the word happily means perhaps, you shall warm yourselves. Now the next verse, pay attention. So when he came to it, he was called, Blessed is he who is in the fire, and he who is about it. Glory be to God, the Lord of all being. Now next verse. Moses, behold, it is I, God, the Almighty, the Almighty. So who's in the fire? We know who's around it. It's Moses. He said, blessed is he who's in the fire. And he says, Moses, it is I, Allah, the Almighty. So who was in the fire? It doesn't say Allah is in the fire. You didn't answer the question. Who's in the fire? I don't know. I don't know who's in the fire. So who spoke from the fire and saying it is Allah? Allah spoke from the fire. Okay, so you just, whether you like it or not, if Allah spoke from the fire, then when he says, blessed be he in the fire, you just said Allah's in the fire, even though you don't want to admit it. That's okay. We're working with you. Including Muhammad. Okay, now, you, since you're a Salafi, I want to ask you about the Quran now. Let's talk about Quran because you say Allah does not creation. The Quran is kalam, speech. It's uncreated. It's not makhluk. It's not created, right? Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> so is the Quran separate from Allah or inseparable from him? It's separate from Allah. Hmm. So now you have the Quran, it's uncreated, and it's separate from Allah, and Allah is uncreated. One plus one, that's two uncreated things. But the speech is part of Allah too. Oh, so then it's not separate, it's inseparable. It, no, but it's separate, it's his own thing, it's the speech, it's part of Allah though. Okay, so if it's part of him, can you separate it and divide it from Allah so it's no longer connected to Allah, or is it always connected with Allah? It's divided. It's, it's, it's confusing. I haven't thought of this. It's very confusing. Okay. All right, we're working with you. At least if you're honest, we'll work with you. That's fine. Because your view of the Quran is what Christians have been saying about Jesus. And by the way, this is not my argument. If you've studied the history of Islam, you heard of the Mutazila. You've heard of the Mutazila? Yes, I heard about them, yeah. What were their argument against the, <clears throat> the Sunnis, like Ahmed ibn Hanbal, who got beat and flogged and thrown in jail because he would not say the Quran is created? They said, they were Muslims, use logic. Your view of the Quran is no different from the Christian view of Isa. You say the speech became a book. They say the speech became flesh. So they condemned you for having the same be belief about the Quran that we have about Jesus. Difference is, you're saying the speech became a book, something physical. We said the speech, the word became flesh. So what's the difference between you and me? Well, the, the thing is, the bo a book is not, is not like... Filthy. It doesn't urinate. It doesn't defecate. Oh, so you're saying that Allah who created you to piss and defecate is dirty because he created you with this dirt. No, he's not dirty, but he created dirty. Okay, but so on. what I'm saying is, did Allah create you to piss? Yes. So you're saying Allah is the direct cause of something filthy and dirty. It came from him. Because he's the well, one yeah. who makes you piss. Yeah. And Allah's still clean, even though he made you dirty and filthy? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then uh, what about Allah blowing his spirit in a woman's uh, vulva vagina? You okay with that? That was the angel Gabriel who blew it in. It was, so it was... you're saying angel Gabriel caused Mary to get pregnant. So angel Gabriel is a father of Jesus. Okay. No, it was Allah. Allah is the one who made it. Who made you it. Make up your mind. Okay. You just told me it's Gabriel. <laughs> now you said it's Allah. Can you make up your mind? Did it, Allah it is Gabriel. Gabriel. Allah used Gabriel. I, I believe Allah used Gabriel. To, so to, how did he use Gabriel? He had Gabriel say, blow into her and get her pregnant? Yes. So then Gabriel caused the pregnancy, so he's the father of Esau. But Gabriel's not a man. He's an angel. But how did the Gabriel's not a man cause a woman to get pregnant? <laughs> because he put the ruh inside. The ruh inside. He, put her, uh, he blew the ruh into... Yeah. He blew, he the, blew ruh? the ruh. Yeah. So wait, Gabriel now has the ability... To blow out spirits into physical bodies. So that means Gabriel is now a partner with Allah because he shares in Allah's ability to blow spirits in physical bodies to make them a living. So Allah took Gabriel as his partner. Stuck no, 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 no. It, it, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. So what does it but mean? It means, that he blew the spirit. That doesn't make Gabriel God. It means Gabriel is the one who makes who's Gabriel had... Allah's partner. How is this Gabriel his partner? That doesn't make sense. Okay, okay, let, okay. Who told, who gave Gabriel permission to blow human spirits in women's private parts? Allah did. Okay. Who gave Gabriel the ability to do that? Allah did. So Allah took Gabriel to be his partner in that he now enabled him and authorized him to blow spirits in bodies that make those bodies alive. Because without the spirit, are you alive? 
Yes. Without the spirit, no, you're dead. Without the spirit, you're dead. So who gave you that spirit that made your body alive? Allah did. Oh, but I thought you said Gabriel. Gabriel blow can blow oh. it in. He, he's just a messenger of Allah. He's not, okay, he's I not Allah. I didn't say he's not a messenger. So when he blew, what came out of him? That spirit that made your body alive? Yeah, the spirit. The spirit of, so of Asa. Gabriel has with himself these spirits that are necessary to make your bodies alive. Oh, no, Allah gave him the spirit and then he used the spirit to put inside Mary. Oh, so now, okay, now Allah gave him the spirit? Yeah, the spirit, Allah gave it to him. So Allah then made him a partner and the ability to then bestow the spirit to human beings. So... Thank you again. We're back to square one. Oh. <clears throat> well, like it, that, to me, that, that there's not there's no theological problem with that. I don't see a theological. Of course, problem. because you're a Muslim and you blindly follow Muhammad. But when we say something similar, and then you call us kafir, mushrik, you know, idiots. Yeah, we we understand. This I is what we call theory. unequal weights and measures. Where if I believe something you don't believe, you can mock it. But when you believe something similar, Allahu alam bil kaifa. <laughs> so when are you going to understand your religion creates more problems than what you think our religion creates for us because if the the word of god can become a book why can't it become flesh and when you said a book is not dirty can the book be desecrated can someone piss on the book yes yes can someone crap on the book yeah can someone shred the book yes can someone burn the book like uthman did yeah, yeah, you can, of course. So Allah's speech became a book, leaving it weak and susceptible to humans to piss on it, to crap on it, to flush it in the toilet, to throw it in the garbage, to burn it. And Allah's but, okay with that? But when you burn a book, that book is just a physical copy. It's not actually the Quran. The Quran is with Allah. Where does the Quran say do. Where does the Quran say that the Quran, if it's a book, it's not the Quran? When it says, we sent down to you the kitab, the book. And the kitab, the kitab is just the it's just the Arabic words on the book. It's not the actual Quran. The actual Quran. Where does the Quran, where does the Quran say that the Arabic book, the Arabic Quran, the book is not the Quran? And which scholar said that? Can you quote one for me? I, I don't. I don't have a scholar, but it's just logic. Like the book, the Quran is just it's just a book. Logic, huh? The yes. same logic I'm using to show you that Allah does things that are illogical, like making Gabriel his partner, which you deny. So you want to use logic, that was the Mutazila. The Mutazila used logic to. Mutazila are Catholics. They're not, they're not even accepted as Muslims. They, they said you're Catholic. Catholic. They say you're Catholic. The only thing they're you Catholic, is they lost out. They lost they were, out. All the Muslims considered the Mutazila as Catholics. They all rejected Which them. Muslims? Not at that time. In the ninth century, many were Mutazilites. Others were what you would call Ahl al Sunnah. So you had two groups. And at one time, the Mutazilites were in power because the Caliph, Ma'mun, was a Mutazilite caliph, and then the one who came after him, Caliph Mutim, and when they were in power, they called you the Kafirs, and they were killing you, and enslaving you, and beating you, and flogging you, like they did Ahmed ibn Hanbal. That's your history, yeah. ninth century, 800s. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay, But so, like today, okay. Go most Muslims today will consider Mutazila kafir. Most, people, most, most Muslims don't even agree with each other, and most Muslims condemn each other as Kafirs, the Shia. What do you consider Shia? Yeah, I, I don't consider the Muslims. That's my point. <laughs> I'm Sunni. So, I'm Sunni. So, yeah. but, but, so you didn't get it. You, you just said most Muslims today would consider the Mutazilite Kafir, but you Muslims consider each other Kafir and condemn each other to hell. That's why in Syria and in Iraq, when ISIS was in power, they were murdering more Muslims than non-Muslims because like you, they consider them Kafir like the Shia and they were killing them. ISIS are Khawarij, though. They left Islam. They're Catholics, too. I, if, I, if I were to give you a member of ISIS who's a scholar, he would run circles around you with the Quran and Sunnah. Because have you ever heard their lecture? They're quoting, quoting ayat of the Quran, hadiths, and scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah. They know the Quran like the back of their hand. I know your scholars here in the West are telling you they're Khawarij. They have to because they're living in the land of the Kufar and they cannot give support to these Muslims who are closer to Muhammad than you are. Okay. We know the game. We know the game, but let's not go too far. Let's come back to the issue. Okay. The Quran, when you said it's a book, it's not the Quran. Really? So well, And kill people that burn the Arabic Quran if it's not the Quran. Mm. The man burned the Quran. He was a Muslim. He was a khayl, khayl, khayl. Okay. Then, why, okay, then you're the making question. my point. When today you had a Christian in, was it in Florida? I forget, or Dearborn. When he was going to burn the Quran, it caused an uproar and 
even in Muslim countries, some Muslims attack Christians because he was burning the Arabic Quran. <laughs> if not the Quran, why did the Muslims flip? Bless you. Because Muslims, you're offending Islam. So that's why Muslims get very angry. If you offend, if you insult the Prophet or you burn the Quran, you're offending us Muslims. Okay, that's why Muslims get angry and they do this stuff. But why would I be offending you if I'm just burning a book with pages and it's not the real Quran? Why would that be an offense? It's symbolic. That's It's, it's a symbolic message. So you're going to kill people over a symbol. Okay. Well, those Muslims are wrong. You're not supposed, I, never, I don't support that. You're not supposed to kill someone if they burn a book. I don't, can, I don't can support you give me, Can you tell me where the ulama say that if you burn the Quran, that's not punishable by death because it's not the Quran? You're making up your own fatwa and you're not a, a faqi, right? You're not. Yeah. So you just gave me a fatwa, but you're not a scholar. Can you now show me a legitimate Sunni scholar who gave the fatwa you gave that if you dishonor the Quran, the book, it's okay because it's only a symbol. No harm will come to you. Or if you do something to the Quran, you are to be put to death. You're not a scholar. You're not a faqih. So can you give me an opinion of a scholar? I don't want to. I, I don't have an opinion. I haven't read what the scholar said. I haven't read. Exactly. The, so so I, fear Allah because you believe in Allah, right? Yes. So then fear Allah. Don't speak in ignorance. You may be wrong. Okay. I, you're right. I, I could be wrong. Okay. So come back. Let's go with uh, Umm al-Kitab, the mother of the book. In chapter 43, verse 3 and 4, it says the Quran is in the mother of the book. So that's the original Quran? Before you go there, yeah. Sam, hold on, hold yes. that thought, hold that thought. Let me give a shout out right here. Um, it's sort of super chat. Thank you so much, Nate. He says, LOL, Sam, killing them. LOL, I'm enjoying your channel, Logic. Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you, the gift, my, my man. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Sam. Okay, so in chapter 43, verses 3 and 4, it says the Quran, the Arabic Quran is in the mother of the book, Umm al-Kitab. So that's the original Quran? Yes, that's the original Quran. It's the only kitab that is with us. Yes. Now, do you believe the copy you have here, this Quran on earth? It's a perfect copy of what's in the mother of the book? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Do you agree that in the mother of the book, every ayat, even the ones abrogated, are still there? Yes. But then this one you have, many of the ayat that are abrogated have been removed? They haven't been removed. They're still there. The Quran is the same. It hasn't been removed. Are you kidding me, dude? No, I'm not getting. Thing? I don't understand. I don't understand what you said. Okay, there are verses that have been abrogated. That's not in the Musaf. It's not in the book. That's the that's, not, that's not true. You want to where, where, where is it? Bukhari, where Omar said the ayat of Rajam, the verse of stoning, was part of the book, but it was not included. Or when Aisha said there was a sheet where Allah sent down the number of times you suckle. You know, rada'a. Uh, Breastfeeding? Yes. It's 10 to 5. It was on the sheet, but a lame, or not lame, tame, was lame, tame animal ate it. <laughs> yes, you have verses that were part of the Quran that are not there today. That's in Bukhari. Well, I, I, don't believe, I don't believe that. I, don't, I believe the Quran is perfectly scholar, preserved. Who cares what you believe? This is what your scholars teach. The I scholars are wrong there. What if it's in your authentic hadith? Yeah. If, it's in, if it's in the hadith, I accept, I accept the hadith. Okay, and I'll the give you the hadith. It's hard to discuss with someone that I have to prove to them what their religion teaches because it makes it longer, but hold on. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. David Wood videos. He, he talks about these things. I've seen it. I'm not talking yet. Okay, David is also talking about missing verses. I'm talking about abrogated verses. Every scholar who's a Sunni will tell you, abrogating, abrogated, some of which is abrogated, was removed from the Quran. Some are still in the Quran. Mm -hmm. So this is I, why. I don't know that. You didn't know that? I, I didn't know that. I thought the abrogated versions are still in the Quran. Not all of them, no. There are many who have been gone, uh, taken away with. In fact, well, here, let me just get it. Let yeah, me see. let's show. Let's show. Yeah, yeah. First of all, let me go to, well, yeah, hold on. Give me a second. Now, as, we're, as we're there, as I get it, open up for him chapter 2, verse 106, and read it for him. So let me get the information. And for whatever verse we abrogate, or cast into oblivion, oblivion, we bring a better or the like of it. Know you not that God is powerful over everything? Okay, now the the entire Quran is Allah's speech, right? Yes. And Allah's speech is perfect and there's nothing like it, correct? Leave yes. the verse off. Don't take it off. Leave it off. Because he's got all the third. You so one more time. The speech of Allah is perfect, flawless, and there's no speech that can compare, into it, compare to it, right? Yes. And the Quran is entirely a speech, correct? Yes. So then, can you explain to me, if every ayat of the Quran is the speech of Allah, and Allah's speech is better, how can one verse be better than another? 
Because, How can uh, one part of Allah's speech be better than another part? It's, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it says that in the Quran, so I believe it. I have to believe it because it's in the Quran. But so I don't you have know to how. believe that Allah sometimes Allah speaks better than other times. Well, well, that's what it says, so I have to believe that. So, yeah. so I, I just want it on record. You agree, Allah, who's perfect and flawless, sometimes He speaks better than other times. Some well, some ayats are better than other ayats. That's yeah, but the ayat is speech. It's Allah speaking. Yes, it is Allah speaking. So that means sometimes Allah speaks better than other times. That that, that that's what it says. Yes, it says that. So you agree with it? So your God improves uh, in His speaking ability over time. Okay, I'm all right. It's all right. I'm just saying. I'm not putting you on the spot. I just want you to deal with what your Quran says. You you really believe that peaceful Muslim? Well, yes. If it, if it's in the Quran, I believe it because I I believe whatever comes from Allah. I believe yeah, everything I, that comes from Allah. So yeah. Uh, how does that make sense though? Like that's you, I, Allahu alam bil kaifa. You don't try to use reason, then he'd be a mutazzali. Hmm. What's wrong with you, Avery? Man, I just I I, I guess I'm losing it, Sam. I I thought I could reason with my Muslim. That's why you're not a Muslim. May Allah lighten your path. Yeah, my heart is darkened. May yeah, Allah we'll guide all of you. We'll come to abrogation a little later. I think this is a sure. this one. Uh, I'll, I'll show them because I wanted to talk, but I think I uh, this I wanted to stay on this course. So, just so we can figure out, you accept whatever the Quran says, and you do admit since every ayat of the Quran is a speech of Allah, and some ayat are better than others, so Allah speaks at times better than at other times. Yes. Well, if if, if that's what it says, then that's what it says. I can't I can't argue. All right. So anymore. here's what I want to ask you though. Since the Quran is the speech of Allah, can the Quran talk to Allah? The Quran, yes, it can. It speaks to Allah. Yeah. So uh, again, the day of judgment, it will come and God. speak on my behalf. So you're very honest. You just admit the Quran is going to do what? Speak, speak on my behalf. Yes. So, uh, so the Quran is Allah's speech, and yet the Quran will speak to Allah. So, is this Allah speaking to Himself? Well, the Quran is not Allah. It's different than Allah. But it's His speech. It's Allah speaking. Yes. So does it make sense that my speech will speak back to me? I don't Allah Ya'lam. I don't I don't know. Allah Ya'lam. Again, you see, only Allah knows. So I'm glad you're honest again. You told people that yeah, the Quran will speak to Allah and it will speak on my behalf to defend me before Allah, even though the Quran is supposed to be Allah speaking. So the Quran is Allah speaking, but that speaking will then speak back to Allah who spoke it. Yeah. Okay. Allah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, I haven't studied no. the religion. Okay, so but do you actually also believe that uh, uh, the Quran will appear as a pale man? That hadith is weak. We, uh, I don't follow that the hadith. The hadith is weak. No, it is. It's not weak. Uh, here it is. It's right here. It's Hassan. And then I'll give you the Salafi site, Islam Q&A. It's great at Hassan. It's not weak. I know you probably heard it from the... Well, anyway, here it is. I just sent it to him. It's Hassan. Where would you say it's weak? Can you show them the grading? And if you want to move that, you know, I know you're happy you got $50. I want to give a shout out again. I don't, oh, gotta, what's the problem? Gotta, if Allah, if, if the Quran appears as a pale man, I don't see the issue. Hold on, okay, you, I didn't say there's an issue. You accept it? I accept it. Fine. There's no okay. issue with it. So the speech of Allah can appear as a pale man. Yes. The ruh of Allah can appear as a man, but Allah cannot appear as a man? Well, yes, yes. Let me so shout Allah this out really quick. Okay, give the shout out. Yeah. I know, yep. I know. Is that uh, yes, but... It got got to man, got to. They're showing love. Uh, so we have Dylan here who says much love from Denmark. Uh, been following, been following UGL for a long time now. God bless, God bless you. Thank you so much. And we have one more, and then we can continue. Um, we have one more over here. We have um, Salakaman. I, I believe I said it right. Hopefully, men of God. Thanks for bringing words of life today. God bless you. God bless you. Um, and pray for Sam. Pray for Sam. He needs my he daughter's needs together. together. Okay, so you you have no problem with Allah's speech speaking back to Allah. Yes. So Allah's speaking, and that speaking speaks back to him. You have no problem with Allah's speech appearing as a pale man, and then yes. the ruh also in chapter nineteen seventeen appears a man. But can Allah appear as a man or no? No, Allah can't appear as a man. You sure? Well, Allah Himself can appear as a man. Um, that can or cannot? Cannot. Cannot. I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm just going to give you that hadith where Muhammad saw your Lord beardless, looking like a youth. <laughs> no, you said no, right? Okay, hold on. Yeah. Here, I'm going to... 
Okay. According to the sound hadith, it's just, uh, it's not da'if jiddan. I'm going to give you my article here. Your God appeared to your prophet as a beardless youth. As a beardless youth. Here's the article. Everyone open it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I link to the hadith online where you can see with his own eyes. That's not incarnation. See, even if that's true, that's not an incarnation. Like, yeah, but, like but you're changing your policy. First you're saying Allah can't appear as a man. Now you say he does appear as a man. And but it's not incarnation, but Allah doesn't need to incarnate because you believe that Allah has always existed with two right hands, at least three eyes and a foot, right? He's always existed with that, right? Yeah, Allah has always existed, yes. So why does he need to incarnate when he already has these characteristics that you don't call a body? But for someone else, common sense. Wait, so this being has two right hands? Yeah. He has a waist? Yeah. He has gonads? Yes. He wears a waist sheet and a zar? Yes. He has at least three eyes? Yes. He has a foot? And you still don't want to call it a body? So if it's not a body, where are these body parts uh, hanging? Are they suspended nowhere? Anyway, uh, if you go, I'm going to tell you what, which one to read. Here it is. The first one, because you can click on the link. Al-Tirmidhi, Hadith 237, narrated Abdurrahman bin Aish. He clicked on it even before he finishes. Oh, yeah, I thought you were. <laughs> oh, man, it's your world, bro. I'm just a squirrel. Okay. Allah's messenger mm -hmm. said, I saw my Lord, the exalted and glorious in the most beautiful form. He said, what do the angels in the presence of Allah contend about? I said, thou art the most aware of it. He then placed his palm. So Allah has a palm between my shoulders. And mm -hmm. I felt its coldness. So Allah has a very cold hand. His hand is cold. When you touch it, you know, it's, oh, that's cold, Allah. In my chest. And I came to know what was in the heavens and the earth. He recited, thus did we show Ibrahim the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. And it was so that he might have certainty. 675. That in me. Reported a mursul for meaning broken. And Tirmidhi also reported it. Now go back to the other one. Because this one's going to be. Okay, scroll on to the other one. Again, click on it. Go to the Alam one. No, go down. Yeah, so we can read it from. So you can know it's from the Muslim website. Mm -hmm. Okay. Allah's messenger. Narrated Muad bin Jabal. Allah's messenger was detained one morning from observing the dawn prayer in congregation along with us. Because your symbol, God logic, I can't read what's behind it. Uh, let me see where you're at. Let me see. The God logic oh, symbol. Yeah. Congregation. So says, along with us till the sun had almost appeared. On the okay, horizon. horizon. He then came out hurriedly and iqama for prayer was observed and he conducted it, uh, prayer Indeed. in brief form. When he had concluded the prayer by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, he called out to us saying, remain in your places as you were. Then turning to us, he said, I'm going to tell you what detained me from you, on account of which I could not join you in the prayer in the morning. I got up in the night and performed ablution, observed the prayer as had been ordained for me. I dozed in my prayer till I was overcome by sleep. And lo, I found myself in the presence of my Lord, the blessed and the glorious, in the best form. He said, Muhammad, I said, at thy service, my Lord. Labaik. He said, what these highest angels contend about? I said, I do not know. He replied, he repeated it thrice. He said, Then I saw him, that's your Lord, Allah, put his palms, two of his hands, between my shoulder blades, till I felt the coldness of his fingers. So Allah has fingers, right? <clears throat> fingers between the two sides of my chest. Then everything was illuminated for me, and I couldn't re recognize everything. He said, Muhammad, I said, at thy service, my Lord. He said, What do these High angels contend about. I said, in regards to ex expiations, he said, what are these? I said, going on foot to join congregational prayers, sitting in the mosques, after the prayers, performing ablution, <clears throat> well dispute the difficulties. He again said, then what do they contend? I said, in regard to the ranks, he said, what are these? I said, providing a food, speaking gently, observing the prayer. And when the people are asleep, he again said to me, beg your Lord and say, Oh Allah, I beg of thee power to do good deeds and abandon abominable deeds to love the poor, that thou forgive me and show mercy to me. And when thou intends to put people to trial, thou causes me to, to die unblemished and I beg of thee. Thy love and the love of one who loves thee and the love for the dead, which brings me near to thy love. Allah's messenger said, it is the truth, so learn it and teach it. Now, who's it translated by? Scroll down a little bit. See, I can't see it. Transmitted by Ahmed. Now pay attention. Turmidu said, this is a Hassan Sahih Hadith. Good sound. Because so I don't want you to say it's daif. It's weak. Hassan, good Sahih. 
And I asked Muhammad ibn Ismail about this hadith, and, it, and he said, it is what? I can't read the part all the way there. Sahih hadith. It is, it a, is sahih a sahih hadith. hadith. Okay. So I just gave you two hadiths. One is sound. Good. Your Lord appeared as a youth where his hands touched, his palms touched Muhammad's chest, and he felt the coldness of his fingers. Now let's go back to Marco where I'm going to show you he appeared beardless. Meaning that Muhammad does, I'm sorry, Allah doesn't follow sunnah. Because the sunnah is you have to have a beard, right? Yes. But your your God doesn't have a beard, so he doesn't follow sunnah. Why are you laughing, man? Scroll down. No, it's really, I'm not lying. It's a lie. His God doesn't have a beard. Here, right here. Go ahead, hold on. Right here. I saw my Lord in the most beautiful form, like a youth with abundant hair. And who narrated? Now notice the grading. al darqutni Kitab al-Ru'ya. Okay, it gives you the numbers. Similar reports from Um El Tufail, Anas bin Malik, Muad bin Afra, Ibn Umar, Aisha, Ibn Abbas, reported by Tabarani, Ibn Abi Asim, Al Bayhaqi, Al Siyuti, Al Haythami, Ibn Adi, Al Baghdadi. Here's another one. I saw my Lord in the form of a young man, beardless, Amrad, with short, curly hair, Jad, and clothed in a rain garment. So your God, beardless, he's young looking. Curly hair, and he wears a red garment. Now, what's the classification of this hadith? Narrated by Ahmed bin Hanbal in Tabarani. Authenticated by Ahmed bin Hanbal in his creed. Citing Isnan, and he gives you the Sanad in the names. Then it mentions that Qutni, Kitab al-Ruya, al-Tabarani, al-Mujim, al-Kabir. Sahih by Abu al-Hassan bin Bashar in, Abi, in Ibn Abi Yala Tabakat. And then it says, accepted by Ibn Taymiyyah and Bayan Tablis al Jahmiya. So, are you okay with your Lord being beardless, wearing a red garment with curly hair, appearing as a youth? I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Right? You're okay with it? Yeah, I'm okay with it. And yet, you have oh. a problem with us saying, God's eternal word became flesh from the virgin. So, he's a human male, perfect, unblemished. Who is the eternal word of the Father? So his kalam, who so he's uncreated. So what's your problem with us, really? Because you, uh, as far as your religion is concerned, you have no grounds to criticize anything we believe about God being triune, or that the Word of God, who came forth from God, became flesh, and that's Jesus Christ. Logically, you have no issue with it. So what's your real problem? Well, Allah is never incarnates. Your, your, your religion teaches incarnation. Allah is never incarnates as a human. What does your God say he doesn't incarnate? Well, you show me any hadith or anywhere in the Quran I don't where Allah incarnates. I'm asking because you made the statement. See, this is how logic works. The one who makes the claim, he yes. has to prove it. Since you're not a prophet, you're not a messenger, yes. you're not a scholar, where do you get that Allah says, I cannot incarnate? So are you saying that you know what Allah can and cannot do? Well, because it, it just in Islam, we don't believe we, we don't believe Allah becomes a human being like Christians. Okay, but you do believe Allah is is human looking. He's a young boy, beardless with curly hair, and you believe Allah has always existed with two right hands, at least three eyes, a foot, a waist, gonads, and a waist sheet, and he's always existed this way. He's always existed, yes. That way. But that th those are descriptions for us for us to comprehend. It's not oh, so they're not real. So Muhammad did not truly really describe Allah as he is. He did describe Allah as he is. So he Allah did. truly has three eyes. If that's what the Prophet said, then yes. Two right hands. If Allah if the Prophet said that, then yes. Yeah, he did say that. I'll give you the hadith. Show you sound authentic hadith. And he has a foot that he puts over hell. Yes, he does. He has a foot that he puts under hell. And he, yes. he wears an izar, a way sheet, because it says that the womb. Reached out and grabbed Muhammad, uh, I'm sorry, Allah by his gonads and yanked on his waist sheet, Azar. If that's what it says, I'm, I haven't read that before, but if it I says that, I'll right now to read it. If the Prophet said that, then yes, I believe this. Is somebody laughing? I'm seeing here, somebody laughing in the background. I don't know what's going on, but anyway. Uh, so God anyway. logic. So you want me to? Wow, really? Yeah, wow. Okay, so, well, let me let me continue with this man because this man looks sincere, and if he keeps opening his heart, he will come to Jesus Christ. So this is not one of those trolls. Okay, so now I'm a Christian. I'm looking at you and saying, so God doesn't become flesh, but your God has always been a physical being of some kind. So you believe in a God who's always had three eyes, always had two right hands, and he has a left one, by the way. 
the hadith Muslim says he has a left hand, which some of your scholars say, well, no, it's his other right hand. It's being called left, not because it's actually left. It's the two right hands, but we call one of the right hands left. But anyway, we get to that. So two right hands. He's got genitals, gonad. He wears a waist sheet. He has a foot and a shin, and you're going to know him by his shin. Chapter 68, 42. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Oh, so you believe that? Yes. Allah has so, a shin. Let me be honest with you. Let me be honest with you. Is yeah. Allah's shin hairy or is it smooth because he's beardless? I, I don't know. I, Allah, this is, this is beyond my knowledge. I, I don't know what Allah looks like, but we will find out on the day of judgment. We so will see Allah's shin possible? and then we will bow down. Is it possible? Since Allah is beardless, his shin can be hairy or it can be hairless? Possible? I don't know. I don't. I, I can't Very comment. I don't, no. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so you don't know. But would you be surprised if Allah were to show His shin and it's very hairy? I don't care. I'll. Uh, it's, it's, okay. If it's part, of, if, if that's what Allah is, then I don't care. I don't. I, don't I really hope care. you go back and listen to yourself because you mock our faith that God became flesh and lived a human life out of His love for us to die for us. You mock that. But if you go back and listen to yourself honestly, honestly listen to yourself. Don't think you're a Muslim. Say, if I'm a non-Muslim and I just heard. This is what I believe. You would start laughing at your own religion. You didn't see how nonsense this stuff is because you're so blinded thinking it's true. Other people are listening. Wait, this man believes God, the creator of heaven and earth. The almighty God has three eyes, two right hands and a left. He's got genitals. He's got a foot and a shin that he'll unveil. And he's always possessed this. And What's he wrong believes with that? That. Oh, say it again. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of wrong with it because if Allah is the creator of all things, let me explain to you. Now, logic. You're talking about logic, right? Okay. Did Allah create all space and place and time? Yes. No. Because if he has eyes and he has hands and he has a foot and a shin, that is what we call a shape, mass, and mass and shape require space. So where yes. was his eye? Say it again. You got it, right? Yeah. You said, yeah. So the light switch yeah. went on. So that means there is a certain space and place Allah did not create because that's the space and place where his eyes and his hands and his shin must exist. So Allah did not create all space and place. So you don't believe Allah is the creator of all things. He didn't create himself, but he created everything but himself. He didn't create himself. And that yeah. himself needs a space to be located and fixated in because where where are the eyeballs? Where because eyeballs they're real, even though they're unlike anything. But they're real. So these eyeballs and these hands have to dwell somewhere. They're suspended somewhere. Well, that somewhere is space and place. So that means there is a part of space and place that's uncreated that Allah did not create. And if he did not create, he doesn't own it. Because that space is something he needs to have to exist in. So there's something that Allah did not create, does not control, but he's actually contained by it. And you don't see the logical problem with this? Well, uh, it's it's beyond my comprehension. I can't understand it. So I anyone just, can use like that excuse. My friend, anyone can say, so when I tell you Jesus becoming flesh and he's God in the flesh, beyond my comprehension, you laugh at me. Ah, stupid kafir. Hmm. Why is it okay for me to let you get off with that? Oh, it's beyond my comprehension. So when I tell you Trinity is beyond my comprehension, ah, you stupid kafir. So why should I let you get away with that? Well, because we believe we believe the last prophet, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi That's why if the prophet said it. Then we, even you don't believe the prophet Muhammad. Even if he teaches nonsense and makes no sense, that ends up making your God not the creator of all things. You're still okay with it. I don't care. Okay, all right. So that means you don't even care with the kind of teachings you find in the Quran. That if you have the upper hand and if you're called to jihad, fi sabil Allah, you would do with with no shame, right? You okay with that? Yeah. You know, well, if it's in Islam, then yes. Of okay, course. so you're okay with chapter 4, verse 24. If you take a woman captive, jihad, spoils of war, and she's married, and the Quran says she's lawful for you because by taking her captive, you dissolve the marriage, you can have sex with her. You're okay with that? I'm not sure if it says that. If it says that, yes, then I have to Open do up it. chapter 4, verse 24, and I'm going to give you the Sahih Hadith. Mm -hmm. Okay, like... Uh, it has a historical background. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the historical background. The background was the Muslims went to war at Autas. This is Sunan Abu Dawud. It's Sahih. And they took beautiful captive women in Ghazwa, an expedition sent by Muhammad. And these women, their husbands were alive. They didn't want to touch them. And Allah said, you can touch them. Just make sure they're not pregnant. I'm going to give you the historical context. But let's first read it. 424. And wedded women, meaning married women, 
you cannot touch, save except what your right hands own. So if there's a married woman, you can't touch her except those that your right hands possess. Now let me get you the hadith for this historical context. You want the historical context, right? Let me get it from sunnah.com. Okay, hold on. Let me get it for you. Sunan Abu Dawood. Let me get it for you. Uh-huh. One second. Here it is. Right and it's Sahih. Here it is. He's going to open up for you. Sahih. Open it up for him. Sunnah.com. I'm Muslim site. It's not my site. I'm there. It's on the screen. Okay. Re okay. Now, friend, can you read it for us? You want to read or you want me to read it for you? He's reading it already and he's shocked. You want me to read it for you? He's shocked. You see his reaction? See? By your action, I can tell you that as you bear the image of the true God, it's not a face, it's bothering you, which is good. There's hope for you. So let me read it. Sunan Abu Dawood, Kitab al Nikah, Abu Sayyid al Khudri said, The Apostle of Allah sent a military ex ex expedition to Autas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have relations with female captives because they're pagan husbands. So Allah, the Exalted, sent down the Quranic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save except those captives whom your right hand possess. So your God said, don't worry about it. You can have sex with them. This is to say that they are, they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period. Only thing you have to do is make sure they're not pregnant. Because if you have sex with them, they're pregnant. You don't know if it's your child or their husband's child. So be honest with me, since you have no problem. If you're living at the time Muhammad, theoretically, and Muhammad sent an expedition to attack your village, he took your mother captive, your sister captive, I don't know if you have a wife and daughter, and your grandma, and they were taken captive, and they had sex with these women. Are you okay with them doing that to your mother, your grandmother, your wife, your sister, your daughter? No, no, no. Say it again? No. So then why are you okay that Muhammad did it to other people's mothers, wives, daughters, and sisters? Because that's what he did. This is the historical context. So why are you okay that he did it to other people's women when you're not okay if he did it to your women? Well, um, that, that's like, that happened at a different time in a different context. It's not this is like... not abrogated. Be careful. This is Quran. It's not... Mansukh, it's not abrogated. This is why when Muslims attack today in jihad, they still take captives and rape them. Tell me where the Quran says this is no longer applicable if you're in jihad. Well, um, fear Allah because you're gonna answer to Allah for every mistake you make. That's a tough question. I, I can't answer. I'm not a scholar. I can't answer. It. It's a tough question. Good. Even your scholars can't answer it because they'll tell you yes, you can, and you know in your heart because I can see a reaction. This is evil. This is wicked. This is adultery to take my wife and then have sex with her in front of my eyes. Just because Allah allowed you to do it, this is disgusting. Condemned by the true God revealed in Jesus. Leave Islam. Yes. Please, you cannot have this. Come to a better way, the only way, Jesus Christ, who would never let you do stuff like this. He would never let you do stuff like this. Now, again, be honest with me. This is your religion. Are you okay that your religion allows... Allows you to marry even minors who haven't had puberty. Be honest with me. Are you okay, are you okay with that? It, it, it nowhere says that. It doesn't. It doesn't say Chapter that. Sixty-five verses one hundred four says that, and all your scholars say this is what it means. Open it up for him. Mm -hmm. All your scholars. Peace, say peace of Muslim. Say every time Sam asks you something, there's a whole reasoning right behind it. Sure. Sixty-five. Do you know what chapter sixty-five is? It's called Surat Al Talaq, divorce. And before we read it, I want to just remind you, in Islam, if you marry the woman and had sex with her and you divorce her, there's a three-month waiting period called idda. Idda. Okay? If you don't have sex with her, then there's no waiting period. That's chapter 33, verse 49. So now, this is ayah, and I'm going to give you the hadith. I'm going to give you the scholars. I'm going to give you Ibn Kathir. I'm going to give you all of it. But I just want to explain to you the context. They came up to your prophet and they said, okay, prophet. We married a woman, had sex, we divorced her, we wait three monthly cycles, three periods. But some of our women are old, menopause. They don't have periods. How long should they wait? Three months. Some of our wives, they're young. They haven't had their periods yet. They too, three months. And here it is. As for your woman, 
who have despaired of further menstruating. If you are in doubt, their period shall be three months. And those who have not menstruated as yet, that's a minor. And those who are with child, their term is when they bring forth their burden, whoso fears God, God will appoint for him of his command, easiness. So did you catch that part? And those who have not menstruated as yet, because in Islam, you can marry a premature minor who hasn't had her period and have sex with her and divorce her. So because she hasn't had her period, how long must she wait before she can be remarried? Give her three months. Now I'm going to give you the scholars, but just there, I didn't make it up, who have not menstruated yet. Can you open up Halali Khan for him? The Salafi mm -hmm. uh, version? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I want to ask you a question. He's going to give you Halali Khan. These are Salafi, because you're Salafi. He's going to open it up. Okay, now Halali Khan, it even gives you explanation in brackets and in comments. And of those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them, the idda prescribed period, if you have doubts about their periods, is three months. And for, now watch here, this is their translation. Those who have, not, have no courses, i.e. they are still immature. Now I'm going to give you the scholars. But before I do that, just reading this. Be honest before God. Are you okay? Do you have a, the ch children? No, I don't have children yet. I don't have children yet. Do you have a sister or a cousin that's nine years I old? I have a sister, but I don't have children. How old's your sister? My sister is 23. So okay. Do you, okay. Someone in your family, let's say you have a niece that's nine years old. Would you be okay in an Islamic society if we implement Sharia? <clears throat> in America. But you're in an Islamic society, implement Sharia. They come and take your nine-year-old niece and marry off to a grown man so you can have sex with her. You okay with that? No. You're being honest. I have a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. I swear to you, I swear to you, if a man came and wanted to have sex with my daughters, I'll be in jail for murder. I swear to you, only God Almighty, whom I love and fear, would save me from doing harm to that person, would even imagine of marrying my 12-year-old, let alone my 10-year-old. Okay. okay. But your prophet made this Sharia. He made it Quran. This is Quran. How can you, with a clear conscience, still follow this religion and say you're peaceful? Well, uh, you know, I, the way I look at it, this happened all 1,400 years ago in a different, different like people back then, they did stuff differently. So it's like, it's not like so in today's your society. Example for all time? He is a prophet for all time, yes. So then, didn't Allah know that even though back then they did this, it shouldn't be done? And I should put an end to it because then someone like you in the 21st century is going to read this and still act upon it. So you're basically well, saying your Quran is useless because many of the commands you're ashamed of and you don't want to put into practice. Still I agree. So well, the thing is, Muslims don't do this today. We, we, you Muslims want to don't, bet? Don't, don't. You want to bet? In Have you seen what the Taliban are doing to young girls? Were you in Syria? Were you in Iraq? Mm. So don't tell no. me that they are doing this to this day. If you don't believe me, I will set up a GoFundMe page. I'm not lying to you. I'll get you a ticket. Go to Afghanistan. Live among your Taliban, Ikhwan, the Salafi Muslims. And then come back to me and say, no, they don't do this. I won't go. I won't go. I won't go. I won't go. They're still doing this to this day. And not only the Sunni, the Shia are doing it too. So my whole point is, how can you still with a clear conscience follow this book? Well, when the thing is that... I was born into this religion, so and so I have a lot. I have a strong love for it, and I was born okay, into. Hold on. Weren't the pagans also born into paganism when Muhammad came and told them leave? Then they use the same argument you did. I was born in this religion, and our fathers were on this path. Yes, but they still left, That's, right? You're right. You're right. But then thing is, the thing is, it's. When you're born into a religion, it's something that's part of your culture. You can't just give it up easily. You can't just give but up. that's what when you show you love God more than your culture and your family. God, even though it's been part of my DNA, I know you're the true God, and I'm willing to give up everything for you. So you're saying you love culture, tradition, and family more than God. Okay, then you're going to answer to God on the day of judgment. It's your, it's your judgment, not mine. I'm not going to stand and give an answer for you. Because if you can still follow this religion, then I got to be honest with you. I pray God saves you from it. But you're a potential danger because if Sharia is implemented, then you would be one of those who would be all for grown men mounting 
minors, premature minors. Do you understand the psychological, physiological damage that does to a premature girl who doesn't know anything about intimacy to have a grown man do that to her? Now, of course, that, that's going to be a, it's going to be a huge problem. Of course. So why did your prophet do it to Aisha? Well, that was 1400 years ago. That's a different time. But he's a prophet for all time. And he's supposed to have set a standard for all people. Did he not know that if I sleep with a nine-year-old who's playing with dolls and on swings, I'm going to cause her psychological, physiological damage. And I'm supposed to be an example for all Muslims to follow. And they're going to follow my example even in the 21st century. I thought Allah knows all things. Allah does know all things, yes. So then why did he have your prophet do that to Aisha? Well, Muslims say that Aisha was mature. She hit puberty. That's, that's what we heard. Okay, so you're saying, okay, let's go with it. It's not true. I, I have the uh, hadith. But let's say, it's, let's go with it. A nine-year-old playing with dolls on swings is mature enough for a 54-year-old man to mount her and then leave her a widow at 18 where she can never marry again. Are you, are you okay with that? Be yeah. honest. Are you okay with that? You, you put it in a way that obviously, like if you, the way you... you no, you it's make not it. I'm putting it. I'm stating the fact and your heart is hurting you. Do you know why? Let me tell you why. Romans 2, 14, 15, the true word of God says, God wrote his law in your heart and the spirit is convicting you. I'm putting it as facts. I didn't exaggerate. It's your hadith that says she was playing on swings and with a doll when your prophet, when they took her, put, him, put her on his lap and he took her to his house and he deflowered her at the age of nine, he's 54. It's hurting you and you know it because the spirit is trying to get your attention. He's telling you, wake up. This is not from God. It's from the pit of hell. So when are you going to leave this man? He's not your example. Jesus is your example. Well, yeah. Muhammad is, is the best uh, person who ever lived in history. So that's yeah. better than Jesus who never yeah, raped been. any women, committed adultery with any women, who never mounted a nine-year-old, who never told his followers to do the same thing. So he's better than Jesus. Muhammad is not even as good enough as Paul. Paul was just a man. And yet Paul never committed adultery, never took captives and raped them, never married a nine-year-old and deflowered her, remained pure and holy because his example was Jesus. Muhammad is not even as good as Paul, let alone Jesus. What are you talking about? I just want to read the hadith really quick. So it says, narrated Aisha said, that the messenger of Allah married me when I was six and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine. And I used to play with dolls. And what's the great? Sahi from Sunan al -Nasai. Yeah, And it's in Muslim and it's in Bukhari. And even Ibn Kathir says, no one disputes. Nobody. Ibn, Ibn Kathir commenting on this age. Nobody disputes this was her age. When are you going to give okay. up? My friend, you understand a 54-year-old that makes him old enough to be her great-grandfather? <clears throat> Uh, well, walk really. away and then follow you. Here, here's, here's my challenge. I don't want to keep going after this. I think you've heard enough truth for you to think about. But here's what I want you to do. Do me two favors. Just do me a bit between you and God. No one's watching you. Number one, cry out to God. Say, Allah, if you're the true God, I need you to show yourself to me. And if Islam is the truth, show yourself to me. Because you make dua yeah. from your heart. Okay. But if Islam is not true, show me what is the truth. And if it's Jesus... I'll accept it, whatever is true. That's number one. And number two, here's what I want you to do. Mm. Not to convert. I dare you to pick up the Gospel of John. Just read the Gospel of John. Just read it. Nobody watching you by yourself. You don't answer to me. You don't come and tell me you did it. But here's my challenge. Open up the Gospel of John. Just read it. It'll take you maybe an hour, but don't rush through it. And tell yourself, when you hear his words and see his miracles, ask yourself, can Muhammad even... Come close to this man. That's all I'm asking you to do. These two things. Between you and God. Because if you die, I die. If you're wrong, you're going to hell, friend. If I'm wrong, I'm going to hell. The yes. most important question you can ask yourself is, who is the true God? And do not care what people think. Because those people won't judge you on the day of judgment. The true God will judge you. But if you love your reputation and your family more than God, God will judge you for that. I just want you to do these two things. Could you do okay. that? Okay, then. All right. That, and I don't want to give you any more. I want to leave you with this. So let's leave him with this. Okay. Say that prayer. Read the Gospel of John. And then if you have more questions, come back. But I just want to leave you with this for now. Okay, then I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave. I'll leave. I, I, I'm done for the day. Okay. Awesome. We'll, well be yeah, you're, 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 you're always welcome to come yes. on, on the stream. And on my channel. 
Yep, on Sam's channel too. He goes live and so Sam banned me though. He banned me from his channel. Yeah, I didn't know who you were. Now when I'm banned, you don't worry about it. Because I didn't know. I thought you're here to make fun, but now I know your sincerity. Okay. Okay. So do the two things and read the gospel of John and ask God and then come back to us. Okay. All right, beautiful. Hey, we appreciate you, peaceful Muslim. Thanks for coming through. Sam, right, thanks, man. No, was, thank the Holy Spirit. That was a divine appointment. That was because I don't know who's the troll or not. You know the Holy Spirit. He arranges. That's why I say this man, Spirit is drawing him. That's why you yeah. saw his saw his face's reaction. You yeah. saw he was like, you could see it. Spirit mm -hmm. is messing up his life because the yeah. Spirit has his eyes on him. <laughs>